there's a problem that says this particular place, the resource sheet is different, or like what we are having now, uh, the registered and the accredited voters, the votes are now more than accredited voters. All you need to do is I need bring all the materials which you're supposed to have, and let's have a recount. Have you, has, since we've been doing election, have we had a situation whereby the, the court said, let's sit down and do a recount? I need bring this Do material. you think we can digitally Why conduct our we, election? What? Such that the, the, the level digital. of interface, See. human interaction with the because that no, is where no, corruption no, so usually no, comes. No, when no. you have too much of human interaction with the process. See, the thing is, even with the digital, if they want to corrupt it, they will corrupt it. One of the things that we must do is not that we keep looking at oh another another method will be better. Oh, the one that we have right now. Can we do it and make it work? And I say this to you, and that's why I said the burden of proof should be with INEC. INEC conducts election. INEC has all the resort sheets, right? They have the resort sheets with them. And they're not supposed to destroy this resort sheet. So if we have a problem with certain areas and say, this place is, the resorts are this, what will it take for the court to say to INEC, bring every of those resorts, if it's going to take us one week to recount every, let's say, a presidential election, let's sit down and physically recount it on live TV. We are talking about our nation here. This is not, we have reached more, lower than ground zero. This is not where we'll sit down and be thinking about, oh, what, what looks pretty? People are dying. We are talking about people's lives here. So INEC can, can do that. That. It's not to first of all thinking, that, oh, is it digital or not digital? Because if the same people, we do things about digital. Yeah. We've seen since 20, let me look at 2015. We've had an uh, amendment of the Electoral Act. And fantastic. Jonathan did an, an amendment, brought in the card reader. What do we have? The judiciary insisted, Supreme Court said that the card reader was not admissible in the court. It took us back. We saw Buhari, as bad as Buhari is. What the the, fair, the most failed leader then before the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, decided to illegitimately climb office. And this is Aisha Yusuf speaking her mind. She we it's not you. And if, you don't, if LCC uh, have any issue, and, they should and, come and meet me. My house is not far you, from there. You're not afraid, from the, to afraid be, of for what would they do? To they be put behind bars for, for your me, statement they, that they might either, be regarded they either put as me illegal bar, and unlawful. They either put me behind bars or they put a bullet through my head. There's nothing that they're going to do that hasn't been done before. You understand? Terrorists are killing people out there. What are they going to do? Put me behind by. Please feel free. When I'm behind by, guess what? I'll be safer than you are. Because I have people protecting me. Every one of us in our houses, we are not safe. In Abuja, they are going to people's houses and carrying them. Terrorists are going inside people's houses and carrying them. So I'll be afraid that uh, someone is going to lock me. So please bring it on. Let me ask you something quickly. Are you worried about your political stance re recently? You supported uh, uh, Obiese Kwesili. Mm -hmm. She lost. You supported uh, Peter Obi. He came distant third. You went to a do state. You supported Lumide Akwata. He came a distant third also. Uh, with the benefit of hindsight, all these um, uh, gap in performance of those who are, whom you have supported, that those who are saying, is it possible for you to rethink your uh, support when it comes to election and probably stay on the side that can also win election and probably actually build a uh, structure because political structure also win election, don't you think? So in 2019, I supported competence character capacity and Nigerians decided that they were going to not follow the best candidate and do whatever they do. Fine, it's a choice. In 2023, I also supported competence character capacity and Nigerians did vote for him, but then there was a rigging that happened. And as matters case, I also supported competence character capacity. And Nigerians decided that, uh, okay, in that case, there's also rigging that had gone on, even though they ha the higher was on, so their votes, some do this thing. So you thought and that so, the election on, in Edoce was rigged too? Absolutely. Uh, hold on, Shewe, let me, let me finish what you've asked me, because it's very crucial. The, way, what, the question that you've asked is the myopic mentality of a lot of Nigerians. The election has to be who wins. That's why you see people in the morning, they will be in one party, in the evening they will be in another party, and they go to another party, because all they want, they would rather support corruption, they would support cre uh, structure of criminality, for them to say that they, they are on the winning side. I don't want to be on the winning side. I want to be on the side of competence, character, capacity, that when Nigerians decide to have sense and allow them to go in, we work for them and give them good governance, accountability, and transparency. So election is not just about winning. If you it's see, about ensuring the right person get into office. If you see this, if, good if you see these attributes in the APC or PDP, would you support them? If there's someone who is there, absolutely, why not? I've always said this. Let mm. me tell you something. It's not about the party. 
It's about candidates. So I've you're not a I've member been, of a Labour Party. I'm not a member of a Labour Party. But you're an obedient. Never, I've never been, hold on, I've never been a card carrying member of any party. And I think I need to change that. I've not, I'm, sti- I'm still waiting. I've not gotten to a place where I want to do sacrifice. Because leadership or whatever in that place, is a whole, it, there's a whole lot of uh, sacrifice attached to it. When you say obedient, I'm a Peter Obi supporter. Even though when that word was coined, I was one of those persons who said that the only person that's going to be obedient is Peter Obi. Because whoever is serving has to be obedient. So but by now, but with, the, with the loose definition that anyone who supports Peter Obi is obedient, yes, yeah, so that makes me obedient. But I'm not obedient to anybody. And even to Mr. Peter Obi was a father. When you get to uh, office, by the grace of God, as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you are the one who is going to be obedient to the people and serve the people. And what we are looking for are people that are going to serve. And you know there was something you made, there was a, a remark you made earlier on, have you been paid? Have you, you know? I'm not because for me, I'm not hungry. You understand? I'm like I heard someone who said that oh, school fees will not pay itself. There are a lot of people who come from that mentality that school fees will not pay itself, so they are forced to either go with who they think will win, no matter how corrupt they are or whatever. I'm not in that place. I'm a trader. I build houses. I sell houses. I started trading in the year 2000. I used to go to Dubai to buy things and come here to sell. I've never worked for anyone. I have a uh, master's in pharmaceutical microbiology. I got that in, uh, since 2007. I started my master's in 2000. Long story, the school, of course, you know what, Nigeria. I wanted to have my PhD before I was 30. So I don't need to work for anybody. I don't need to earn salary. I live my life. I'm financially independent. I was 40. Th- when th- I, thanks to oh, Mr. Yesufu, too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going, I'm <laughs> the man is doing I'm, a good I'm job, isn't he? In that place. I'm absolutely we need to give him an award. Absolutely. My husband, oh my goodness. See that I love him. You know, I'm coming to that place where, for me, I worked on my financial independence before I sp- started speaking on. Nigeria. So you're an independent woman. I'm, I'm a financially independent woman. I've been yeah. before I was 40. Mm. I grew up poor. Well where I would go to school in the morning without breakfast. Coming back home, I wasn't expecting lunch. And I saw how, because you are poor, you are... So you were born in poverty. I wasn't born in poverty. My father lost everything, Mm. and we became extremely poor. Within a twinkle of an eye, we lost everything. And I grew up in Kano, in a place called Kwanahoto, where it's dead... Deadly in a way that when other people hear we're from that place, they're afraid of us. Even up to today, you see, like, we talk, say, whatever. It, I call it the Ajengule of Kanu. And so, seeing that, when you're... So, you were from the slum. I am. Wow. I grew up in that place. And let me tell you something, Shou. I saw where, because you're poor, you're faceless, nameless, and voiceless. And I, I grew up angry. And I didn't want to be faceless, nameless, and voiceless. So I didn't focus on Nigerian issue. Even though the first protest I did was in 1992, in my first year in the, my first semester in the university. I didn't talk on Nigerian issue until my 40th birthday. And what happened? On my 40th birthday, I realized that I had become the problem of Nigeria by my silence. And I decided I was going to start uh, speaking. Four months after Chibo guests were abducted, and I came out to speak. So when I talk... And I say this shit when I dare anybody, living dead or alive, to say that I, Aisha Yusufa, have ever gone to your place to look for appointment, to look for contract, to look for whatever. I don't do it. I'm a trader. I buy, mm. I sell, I distribute, I build houses, and I sell houses. I'm not.